Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to take a look at how to use ink to make art. So stick around. I recently made an all my inks video and I have about 30 bottles. <laughs> so I really love ink and I love using it to make art. Things like this where, okay, where you can make a wash of color this right here is Monbato's hat ink. And this right here is Diamine Bougainvillea ink. And I just made a wash and then I drew with pen on top and with white gel pen. This one is colored pencil that just make pure washes and just enjoy the ink and do little doodles with metallic watercolor. And then another way is just to draw with a fountain pen. So like that's with this right here, Alt Goldgren. That is with Copper Noir. That is with Aurora Borealis. And so you can just draw like you would with a pencil, but use a fountain pen instead. And so we're gonna go through a bunch of different methods of how to use your ink to create art today. And in order to do that, the first thing we're gonna do is look at fountain pens. All different brands, but the main thing that matters is the nib. That is a fountain pen nib. And that one right there is a broad. This is a Twisby Go. It's a very affordable pen. This is a Jinhao 992, and that's a fine nib. So let's start with the fine. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see the writing a little bit more easily. Okay, so this is a fine nib. And that is platinum carbon black ink that is permanent ink when it dries you can brush it with water and it's not going anywhere so that's the one that i use mostly for sketching a medium nib i have two different mediums different brands uh, have different thickness and that's really what the nib means it's the thickness of the line that you're going to get F there's extra fine that's even finer than this and I don't have one of those because I really don't use them. <laughs> but just imagine an even thinner line than that. This is a medium nib. This is Alt Gold Grun ink from Rohrer and Klingner. In a, so these are actually both German. Caveco Collection um, Classic Sport. This is a Moon Man that also has a medium nib but it's an even thicker line. And this is a very wet writing ink. That is cross violet. And that's another medium nib pen. Then we have the broad nib. And this is the Twisby Go. A stub nib. So, so far all of the nibs kind of look the same. There's a little ball on the end. A stub nib is a little different. The stub literally has that stubby end. It looks like someone stuck it, cut the tip off. See? That's the ball that comes on most nibs. That'll be on an extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad. Thinner lines on the side, thicker lines if you turn it straight. So thin, thick, thin, Thick. That is why people love a stub nib. That's a 1.1. This is a 1.5. This is a Moon Man M2. That's this pen, this little demonstrator. This is a Moon Man M8 pink flower. And it just has that pretty pink flower. And this has a Jovo, Jovo 1.5 stub nib. So it's a thicker stub, which you can really see already. And see, it really has a dramatic, thick and thin alternating. Yeah. And I, for some reason, can't keep a straight line now. That is hilarious. It was going so well. And then I just fell off a cliff with the straight line. But um, <laughs> the Brandy Dazzle, so pretty. We have the bent nib. That is a literal bent nib. That really gets dramatic, thick and thin. So this is a... Bent nib, I believe it's 55 degrees. This is a sailor pen. 
Wow. And it really, look how if you kind of lean it like this, where the whole bent part is in contact with the paper, you get an extremely thick line. If you kind of lift it straight up, you get a really thin line. If you turn it upside down, you get an even thinner line. So this is this one pen has a lot of different looks and I love this for sketching and a lot of artists will just bring this pen because you have every type of line you could ever want. You're going to use these to sketch what thickness do you want? What effect are you going for? If you look, for instance, at the broad nib, you can see that even within one pen, the writing changes color from light to dark, from the top being lighter and the dark being darker. <laughs> the top being lighter and the bottom being darker, that's because your pen is going more slowly on the bottom. And when your pen is going more slowly, the ink has time to pool. And you'll see that again a little bit with the stub nib. You see some shading there. You definitely see it in the Rohrer and Klingner ink. Definitely see it in the Cross Violet. It's in the Brandy Dazzle, but you can't see it as well. You really only see it there. Um, but that's also a shimmer ink. So you get some of that shimmer happening in this. You can really see it in the word stub. See, those are sparkles in the bottom. You have to kind of agitate it and shake it up to get the sparkles to move around. So that's a shimmer ink. This is an example of a sheening ink. It actually turns a different color when the ink pools. So that's different than a shading ink. This is a good example of a shading ink where it's just a darker color and a lighter color of the same color. This is actually a different, it sheens a totally different color. It sheens like this pinky red. So shading, sheening, sparkle. Now that you understand the different things that the ink itself can do and the different things that different pen nibs can do, let's take a look at some pen art. I thought it would be fun to do some whales and so I picked some colors that I thought would be good for that. I got Dimine Aurora Borealis. I just think that'll be really pretty. I've got Birmingham Pen Company Voltaic Arc, which is a really high sheener. I've got Dimine Evergreen, which also, also sheens. I've got Dimine Bougainvillea. It has like a lime green sheen, really pretty. I've got Diamine Honey Burst, which doesn't sheen, but it's a beautiful shader, and I, I've painted with that before. I've got Diamine Brandy Dazzle, which has that beautiful sparkle. I've never painted with that. I'm really excited to try. Lamy Azurite, which I have painted with before and love. And finally, Diamine Mombada's Hat, which I've also painted with and love. And then over here, I just have Colorverse Delaware, which I think is going to be a beautiful sea color, but I'm not going to apply that as ink like this. I've poured out the inks that I just showed you up there into this little palette. Each has their own well um, so that I don't contaminate the larger bottle. These I'm going to use in pen form so I can show you how you can use both. Let's start with an outline. So I'm going to take my permanent ink and I'll outline this little guy on the left. I think he's super cute. So let's do his eye. Give it a little sparkle. In fact, let's do all the eyes. I think that'll help the camera pick up where these whales are. Let's do, this is India ink and you're gonna see a lot of ink on my fingers. That's just how it is when I'm playing with ink. I get it everywhere. Uh, some people are cleaner than me. I'm not the one. So one thing that I wanna do is take my water brush and I want to paint the bottom of this little guy. And this actually has some ink left over. It has some blue ink on it from the last time I used it. I don't mind. It'll actually probably just help you see where I'm putting the water. So I'm just squeezing a little, painting the water where I want the ink to go, because it will follow where the water is, just like watercolor. And honestly, that's a lot of what you're gonna see is that the rules with watercolor, and I did a watercolor tutorial that I will link, but the same sort of principles and rules, if you will, that apply to watercolor apply to ink as far as wet and wet, and um, dry on wet, all that stuff is gonna apply. It just looks a little bit different. And this is just India ink. Watch it as it hits the water. It's one of the more satisfying <laughs> moments for me with playing with ink. It's just when water hits that ink and plays it around and it moves on its own. And I want to minimally mess with it. I don't really wanna mess with it too much. Make sure this is still wet. This paper is so absorbent. It's 270 GSM. So it's just sucking up this water before I can play with it. 
look so pretty so that's one of my favorite things to do with ink is just play with the wet and wet and not mess with it. It's hard not to mess with it. I want to mess with it. I'm going to mess with it just a little bit right there. And then I'm going to use that leftover ink again, just to paint on this little shadowy part. Leave that guy the way he is for now. So that's probably the only spot I'm going to use this India ink, but I wanted to show you, you can put India ink in a water brush pen. You can water it down to whatever wateriness you want. You can water it down enough that it looks like that coming out of here and you can just add shadows around but I this one's pretty much pure concentrated India ink and I just leave it on my desk at all times I love to do stuff with it so now while that's wet I'm also going to dab in some of this roar and clingner using a pen look at that so I want to do the lines these sort of belly lines that whales have sometimes and I want it to move a little bit and spread a little bit while this is still wet. But I also want it to be legible as lines. Okay, beautiful. Belly of that whale is done. And we have done the wet and wet with India ink. And we have done a little bit of a wet on dry with the Ruhr and Klingner. With... Okay, let's make this little whale, this little chubber, purple. And get my purple. Same idea, I just want it to bleed. When I lift, it's going to have, it's kind of like the pooling when you're writing and you see shading. Remember how I explained that? You see shading because at the bottom of letters, that's where you're leaving your pen for a little bit longer. And that means that there's gonna be some pooling and the pooling is where the ink is going to be darker, more concentrated. And that's exactly the same concept as when you're painting. If you are dabbing darker, more concentrated, if you are just moving it quickly, less concentrated, less dark. Ooh, is that cool? Look at that dark, dark ink. Now when that dries, because this is Lamy Azurite that I'm using right now, that should have some amount of green sheen to it, which should tie it nicely into this little guy that he's right next to. Oh, I love that. I think that's so pretty. Okay. So let's do a little bit of a bleed, but just much lighter into this part of the tail. Just water. I'm just letting the water touch. The water is just touching that ink and it travels right into the water. It wants the water, it gravitates towards the water. So when you touch wet ink with water, it'll travel right into it. The same as with a watercolor, where watercolor travels right in to a wet area on the page. Exact same concept. Now I want to do do his little lip. And again, I'm just using a water brush for all this. This is just playtime. It's okay if it's not perfect. I want this to stick out a little more. Okay, oh, that is so cute, oh my gosh. Okay, so, and then here, I want a little bit of pooling. Oh, okay, I already am obsessed with that. That is so cool. I love what ink does. I love how unpredictable it is. That is so cool. Okay, that this one is tinged blue and purple now forever. I don't use my fancy brushes when I'm playing with ink. And I, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just wet my brush and take, and this actually, this water does have purple now. I don't have clean water out. So I'm a naughty, naughty ink user. Naughty watercolor user without clean water. I've got purple tinged water. You're all gonna lose it on me and I can't even blame you. Okay, so that is one wet fin, that's another wet fin. Let's take our Colorverse Delaware, this beautiful color, and draw right into it. Ooh, look how pretty. Wow, okay. So now because that's wet, it's actually sucking up into my pen and my pen's not wanting to write. That's the issue is if it's too wet, your pen won't want to write right into it. And you might have to wake it up once in a while by writing on the non-wet part. So what I'm doing is I'm dabbing on the edge and pulling it in. Dabbing on the edge and pulling it in so that I'm getting those wet and wet effects just on the edges. Fin, little arm fin, would probably have some deposits of something that's a little too wet and it would just make sense that an undersea creature might have some of this going on. 
And what you can also do, you don't have to drop it in to an already wet surface. I can drop it into a little bit of a drier surface. It'll still spread if it's damp, but even if it doesn't spread, let me show what happens if you just write with the ink and then you want to spread it. You can still do that because this is water soluble, so you can paint right over it. I wanted this to just be totally softened out. You do that. And that'll soften it out. Oh, I think that looks so cool. My God, I love playing with this stuff. Can you tell? OMG. Love, love, love. This Alt Gold Grun, I don't know what happens when water touches it, but it's so beautiful. When I give you the close up at the end, I think you'll see what I mean. It's so much fun. Oh my gosh. So I'm just going to press this stopper down so that some of this ink just plops right down into the water. I'm going to try to control it because if it goes too fast, it'll be way too much. Drop. Look at that. Drop. Okay, cool. Then I'll drop a little more. I'm going to just lean that over so it travels because like I said, the water will travel. Oh, let me get rid of that. The water will travel where there's water. It wants to meet the other water, but it won't really go anywhere else. Little thin. Okay, so that needs a little bit now. This guy's ready for a little more fun. So let's get him some evergreen. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, do you see what I'm saying? I know that I've said it now so many times, but this is what I love about ink, is please try to tell me if you put ink on something, where exactly it's gonna go, what exactly it's gonna do. You have no idea. You have no idea where it's gonna go or what it's gonna do, and that's the fun. So I made this one with Honey Burst on top and Brandy Dazzle on the bottom, and I got so obsessed with how beautiful the Brandy Dazzle was that I didn't leave enough contrast on that one. So later I'll come back in and try to fix it with black ink. This one though, the one that I'm making on the side, it came out, in my opinion, the best. I think it has everything that I like. It has enough contrast, it has ink bleeds, it has lines, I just love it. But you can't lift, so I wasn't able to make that higher contrast by getting some of the ink off. <laughs> All you can do is make it darker. And that's the same thing that happened here with this green one. I didn't make it high contrast enough, and so I added black on the green one on the bottom. This pink and purple one, same thing. I wanted to see this pooling because the pink bougainvillea paint and the purple Lamy paint both have a really dramatic sheen if you let them pool. And so I just kept wanting to make it pool more and more. <laughs> okay. Now what I want to do is just do like little designs for ferns and, you know, like wildlife and things like that. I don't know. Little shapes like that and drop some paint in there. I want to do a little diamine evergreen thing. I don't know what it even is. And then let's do a Ooh. Look at that. That was cool. Loving this. this is so much fun. I actually am obsessed with this one. I love this one. This one is not high contrast enough. This one is not high contrast enough. I just used too. I was so excited about the inks. I used too much. Fun little things. I like that. I love this color burst. So I just want to do that droplet thing again. Ooh. Ooh. I'm getting ink everywhere. I just need to be clear. I am getting ink everywhere. If you think that I'm doing this and I'm not, you are crazy. <laughs> Let's do one more. Little guy right here. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. That's the ink. That's the indie ink. Okay, so that's the only... We'll just do one in India ink. No problem. That's the only problem with having your India ink in a water brush when you're using a water brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Let's put one here. Because this is eyedropper filled. 
<laughs> well, that came out fast. <laughs> okay. This is going to need some significant time to dry. That's my dog on cue, ready to be taken out. Let's see if we can get that to move a little more. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then we'll come back and see what everything looks like dry. Yeah, let's let them dry. I'm just going to make a mess if I keep... Okay, I'm just going to make a mess if I keep... I have to stop. So let's let that dry and we'll be back. So this is pretty much the final piece. I went over and looked at each of the little baby whales and noted where I needed to add some more contrast. This one really bugged me the most because there was like no contrast. <laughs> there was a difference because the bottom is very shimmery, but the bottom and the top are almost the same color. And so it didn't have that fun, I don't know, contrast. There wasn't any shading, there wasn't any shadows. So I went in with this India ink and just added some more definition. I also went in some plain water and watered out that white part so it was a very pale color but not pure white and I really think both of those things definitely helped the more black I added the better it looked on that one I loved how the little seaweed pieces came out I also went in and made some more dark areas on this little purple whale because I thought the pink and purple whale was the other one that didn't have enough contrast I loved how this came out it was so stinking fun to do this i had a blast playing with my inks in my studio so i hope that this inspires you to play with some ink it's a really affordable way to get into some beautiful colors you get a lot of color for a little money compared to something like watercolor so i hope you dive in use some of these tips and tricks to make your own art leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it remember to make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you're new and until next time, remember, create something cute.